Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Patty Fremo here. Today is Monday, November the 26th, 2018. It's 4 p.m. New York time, 1 p.m. Los Angeles time. That's, uh, let's see, what does that work out to? That's uh, 9 p.m. London time and 8 a.m. Sydney, Australia time. I'm going to get that down pat one of these days. We're getting closer, not quite and, there. And 1 o'clock San Diego time. And 1 o'clock San Diego time, that's right, <laughs> which happens to be also Los Angeles time. So. That's right. So, there you go. Yeah, so this is good. This is good stuff. And uh, this is your second daily dose of happy for the day. We hope your day is going well. And if it is, we're going to help boost it up a little bit higher. And if it's not, we're going to boost it up a little higher. So either way, it's going to boost a little higher. And that's the whole idea, right? <laughs> Exactly. So how was your Thanksgiving? Did you have a good one, I hope? I did. I was up in San Francisco with my do- both my daughters, actually. Um, and we. it's interesting how uh, my holidays have evolved since my divorce, like, what, seven years ago or something like that. Um, you know, it's funny because when I first um, got divorced, I kind of – Initially, we kind of did things together with our kids, and then I kind of backed up a little, Mm -hmm. and uh, my ex-husband got remarried, and um, so my, you know, at the beginning, I was kind of like, what am I going to do? Like, what do you do? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when you have all your traditions are kind of gone. My sister um, lives back east, and I love hanging with her, but Mm -hmm. I don't like flying in the wintertime back east. Well, especially during holidays. That's not the most fun time to be hanging around in airports. Well, it's more the weather that freaks me out. The whole idea of um, having... you know, de-icing, like the word de-icing <laughs> just, 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 just scares me to death. So for some reason, I don't know why, it just freaks me out. So, so um, it's your so equivalent of fingernails on the blackboard. That's what de-icing is for you, right? Oh, I'm like gripping. I'm like the white knuckle express, exactly. So, <laughs> um, and my, uh, I love, so I usually go back and visit Becky's during the spring or fall or summer. And um, anyway, so over the years, it has kind of evolved um, into now I'm, I'm very close with my, um, ex's family since, uh, we've been together. We were together 25 years. So, mm. uh, somehow we stayed close and I actually went to high school with one of my sisters in law. So oh, wow. It sort of evolved back into, um, some, I, I sort of, they've invited me back in to participate in Thanksgivings, That's which nice. is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's been great. So, and they have a very large family, like, you know, one of those hundred cousin families. Oh, wow. Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> so, but my two sisters-in-law, even though we're from Philadelphia originally, my two sisters-in-law live up in the Bay Area. Oh, okay. And now my daughter lives up there, too. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. it's just kind of worked out really nice. Very good. To be able to spend time. That's really great. That yeah. Well, so, it's all good stuff. And uh, I is. hope all of our listeners had great Thanksgivings as well. Um, we are doing a Q&A today, a Law of Attraction Q&A. In other words, we're opening it up um, as we have been doing um, almost every time now for the last couple of months. We are live streaming this while we record the podcast to the Law of Attraction Change My Life group on Facebook, which is a pretty good sized group. And so we are basically tapping into that community today and offering people to come in and just you know share your Whatever's going on in your life that you'd like a little advice on or a little help with or or maybe just something you want to brag about, maybe a great manifestation that happened, whatever it might be. But uh, share your stuff. and and Or or even just questions about law of attraction. Like a lot of times people are new. Yeah. And that's what I find in my meetup is a lot of people come in new and they're like – What's a vortex and what are these steps and how, what's a vibration and how do I do all this stuff? This is true. So yeah. That's, that's right. We, really we, we can't good. assume everybody's got different levels of uh, understanding and experience with this stuff. So you're right. We got to remember that exactly. uh, we're, we're, we're dealing with all levels. Um, and we are already getting comments as often happens. Uh, Kate is saying Australia time here, here. So I guess Kate's from uh, down under. Hello, Kate. Thanks for t- tuning in and joining us today. And Jeffrey's right. waving can... hello. Hello. And uh, you know, so we have people already, I can see eyeballs watching us, so that's a good thing. Um, uh, I guess we'll probably have to give people a few minutes to figure out what they want to start bringing up because, you know, we have to kind of cue that a little bit. But I want to share a story, and this is maybe a way to get the whole thing started. We have a number of listeners, particularly lately, who have been writing in and telling us how much they love the podcast and they love uh, all the co-hosts and all that kind of thing. And it's been really great. Some of the people have been really effusive 
and the things that they've um, they, they've told us about, you know, what they like about the podcast. And and I just want to first of all thank all the listeners who write in and all those who listen who are enjoying it who may not have spoken up but feel the same way. We really appreciate every one of you. I had a Facebook meeting the other day with a listener. And I, I won't say where she's from. I won't say her name or anything because she's in a rather difficult situation, which will become evident in a minute. Um, there are many, many, many people in the world, many of them women, who live in societies that, let's just say, are not like the United States. Let's put it that way. And uh, some people live in pretty severe circumstances. This yeah. was one of them. Um, I actually did a little uh, checking just to get kind of a, a list of, you know, how many countries is it are, are there where, for instance, women have, you know, lack basic rights, you know, the right to vote, the right to leave their home, right to, you know, drive a car, all that kind of thing. And it's an extensive list. Um, wow. I, and I, I've got to mention one of them. Just it, This is not related to the, the conversation, but why is it that the Vatican City does not allow women to vote? I don't understand that one. But for whatever reason, in the Vatican City, women are not allowed to vote. I um, well, whatever. Enough or of that be, comment. Or be priests. Or I be guess. Priests. Or be priests. We could well, go on yeah. and on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. but we'll I mean, leave that I mean, one it's alone. It's funny because women's rights have come so far in so oh, yeah. many countries and in so many ways. Yeah. However, it's you still know, it's actually still when you look equal. at the global population, it's still a relatively minority position. I mean, most countries really haven't adopted it yet. True. A number have, really fortunately, yeah. but uh, you know, it's it's got a ways to go. Anyway. That's just to kind of set the scene. I had this conversation with her, and she was telling me about things going on in her life and telling me about um, her dreams, uh, and one of her dreams is to be able to leave her four walls. Um, And, again, I won't go into all the details of it, but uh, she's very well studied in the Law of Attraction. She really knows this stuff. She's been studying all the great leaders, Abraham, Neville Goddard, um, you know, the moderns like uh, Wayne Dyer, and, you know, I, I don't know what the whole list, but she, but she has studied this stuff extensively. She knows it really, really well. And it was quite refreshing to talk to somebody who, first of all, goes through stuff that I can't even begin to imagine, and second of all, has somehow managed to study all this stuff. I'm thinking, wow, I'm just so impressed by that alone. And but she was looking for a little help because she wanted to be able to manifest leaving the four walls and, and going to uh, another part of the world, a, a Western part of the world. Um, again, I won't name where, but, uh, and she was kind of struggling with, with, with doing that. And she, she knew most of the, the stuff really, really well. Well, I thought a lot about you while I was talking with her. Well, at first I was trying to figure out how I could help her at all. I wasn't even sure how I could help her at all. Right. But as the conversation went on, I started noticing a pattern that you have shown me very well. Um, in terms of when we've been doing the, the coaching with people um, here on the show, how important it is to go after the feeling side of stuff. How are you feeling? What is the, you know, what, what, what's your feeling experience with all this? And I pointed out to her that the, the, she, was, she was creating these wonderful paintings, those wonderful mental pictures of what it is that she wanted to attract into her life. But there was no feeling attached to any of them. And so I said, well, what does it feel like? What does it feel like? And she tell, started telling me this story about this one city she wants to go to. And this story was vivid with feeling. I mean, she was, she was expressing all the sensory pieces of it. You know, the, the, the coolness of the air and, and the temperatures and the sounds of, you know, the, the street vendors and you know, all that kind of stuff. She, she was painting this whole picture. And what was so cool about it is she was getting really excited as she was talking about it. She was so psyched. She was so happy with it. And she's actually communicated a few times with me since then, telling me about various progress she's made um, in, in maintaining her focus on that. And... I, I just wanted to say, boy, if there's somebody going through what she's going through and she can develop that focus and she can develop that level of, a, of you know, intensity and, and blocking out all the stuff and, that she and, doesn't want. And raise her vibration. And raise her vibration. Well, if she can do that, what the heck are the rest of us waiting for? I mean, I mean, she is a model as far as I'm concerned, a model person to follow in terms of her ability to just focus on what she wants, stay with it, and, and now incorporating the feeling side of it. And mm-hmm. so I, I wish I could shout out to her, but I don't want to put her at any kind of risk. So I'm shouting out quietly. <laughs> <laughs> You're whispering out. I'm whispering it. it. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Because you think about how, um, you know, I know our goal is to look at how we want to feel and focus in on our feelings. 
and not focus on not not focus on what we're observing mm-hmm. in, our, in our current situation. Mm-hmm. But geez, you know, sometimes that can be so challenging and oh. talk about challenging circumstances. Yeah. You know, that really is that really is a difficult one. Right. And um, you know, how cool though that she's reaching out to raise herself up. And, as much and as she, can. she is raising herself up in I mean that deserves an underlines and uppercase. She is really raising herself up. That's the part that mm-hmm. impresses me so much. Yes, the fact that she raised out, reached out, that also is impressive. But what she's been able to do on her own is just mind-blowingly good. And plus, yeah, she also had some really interesting manifestation stories. Despite living in these very restrictive conditions, she's manifested some stuff wow. that would blow your mind. So, wow. Well, <laughs> it's even really manifest being able to communicate yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. With, with the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny, though, because I, and I hear that, and that is so... Um, just overwhelming the idea of being mm. in that circumstance. Yeah. And what it also brings up for me is um, sometimes there's people who aren't really even in bad circumstances, but they're feeling so bad. Yes. And it's it's all relative, you know. I mean, uh, there's really no comparison. Somebody, actually, you can't really compare one person's experience with another. You there's can't, no way to do you it. Can't. No. You can't. And everybody's entitled to their feelings. Absolutely. And some people are in these amazing circumstances, and yet they're feeling so empty mm-hmm. inside. Yep. Um, so it does, you know, it, it really doesn't necessarily go with our outside circumstances, mm-hmm. how we're feeling inside. So, um, you and know, I, w- I, I wouldn't want any, anyone to feel that, um, you know, geez, I, I'm ashamed of myself for feeling bad because my circumstances aren't that oh, bad. Oh, you know? definitely. Do you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. 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 I agree with you totally. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but not that anybody wants to feel bad, but. But the idea being that everybody's own circumstances and how they're feeling is is how it is. It just is how it is. And there's no judgment either way. You're looking at something there. I'm what looking, are you looking at, at Well, I'm looking at the uh, comments because we've got some comments. And I think we have our first question. Let me just my, – my screen is, is not aiming the way I would normally want it to. So I have to kind of <laughs> take a look. Um, Jeffrey's saying, I've been having so much fun using the law of attraction, even bringing in money. Currently, I'm working on moving – from surviving to thriving, well, that's good. That's really good. And then he says Pakistan. I'm not sure what Pakistan fits in with that. Maybe that's where he's call- coming from. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Um, Twinkle asked. Well, I love the name Twinkle. Twinkle asked, "How do I attract?" <laughs> okay, I don't. Know. I'm not sure what this is. How do I attract con? No. Yes. How do I attract contest wings? Contest wings. I don't know what that is. Do you? Don't know what those are. No. no, but the first one I wanted to address rather than, you know, I didn't want to skip over what Jeffrey said. Well, yeah, that, he, he didn't really ask a question, but go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing about attracting money is it comes back to the same thing. I got, you know, as, as Abraham says, there's, you know, no matter what the question, it's the same answer. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, it's looking at, I know one of the biggest challenges for a lot of us is the money issue mm-hmm. and um, how to attract that and not... Um, and, and go from just surviving to thriving. Mm. And I think that, um, one of the things that I find is the most helpful is looking at if, if, if somebody can look at the money situation and not have a wobble Mm -hmm. and can, and think, can think about what they really want and get to that point where they're really feeling good about that fantasy of what it's going to be like as if they're already there in present tense, Mm -hmm. then go for it. Uh, so that might look like um, if you can genuinely say, uh, and again, you know, when someone's in that place where they're sort of going from that lesser place to and they want to get, they want to raise the vibration, it's getting more general is always the thing that helps in those circumstances. Right. So, um, you know, it might be looking at the statements that you can say to yourself that feel true to you that help you take a little step up in that vibration and in mm. that belief. Yes. So it might be, um, rather than going from surviving to thriving, it might be looking at, um, I believe that there is more, there is plenty of money out there for everybody. Mm. And I believe that I, I have seen how things have gone on a better trend for me. I'm seeing how things are starting to come to me more monetarily. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling more uh, deserving where before I didn't feel like I really deserved it, now I'm feeling like I really do deserve it. So mm. those little steps up towards that better feeling thought, um, 
But if it doesn't feel good to go there, if it makes sends you into that wobble or into where you're really doubting and not really believing it, uh, rather than just saying the words, going into something that really you can believe, but maybe in a different, completely different topic. Mm -hmm. Because maybe that maybe that topic is just too emotionally charged and you just are in such a bad place about it, you can't believe it. So picking any other better feeling thought that just feels a little bit better and focusing on that. So, Definitely. you know, that whole idea of raising our vibration can be on any topic. It doesn't matter what the topic is on. It's true because it, it doesn't matter what, you know, what, how you got there. The question is, how do you feel? If you feel good, then you got there. It doesn't matter whether you were thinking about money or, you know, rock climbing or petting the cat. It makes no difference. It's all irrelevant to the real question. Did you get to the good feeling place? If you got to the good feeling place, you got there. That, it doesn't matter how you got there. There are a lot of roads there. And that, and that can be the, I see your kitty behind you. Yeah. <laughs> and that can be, <laughs> that can be the manifestation in itself. Mm -hmm. But of course, most of us are all looking for that thing. Right. Right. Those things that we put into that, into the vortex. So here's this vortex as Esther always does it down to the left. <laughs> <laughs> the spinning vortex. I always wondered where it was. It's next to Esther. Of course it is. <laughs> so. You know, here we've put all these things. Every time we have something that we don't like happens to us or every time we have some contrast, that shoots off those rockets of desire and whatever that is we're wanting, it automatically happens mm. vibrationally in that right. vortex. So there it is hanging out waiting for us. Yeah. Exactly so in order true. to get that stuff in, it's just getting into the vortex. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even matter what the topic's on. Just getting us into that higher vibration place and things will start coming in. And it's just always so shocking and amazing to me how the universe can figure out how to line everything up in your life to make things come into your experience through the most unexpected ways sometimes. Very true. In fact, it's actually a yeah. little bit disconcerting because when stuff plays out, you actually have to kind of sit back and reflect and say, what just happened? I mean... What was this connected to? The, which thought process that I had was this reacting to? And then it played out in this way and produced this? <laughs> You're trying to piece together exactly. this puzzle. And it's just it, it can be mind-bending to try to figure it out sometimes. It, it, it is. It is. And that, that universe is just so unbelievably smart. It's just yes. crazy. I feel like this is the, that's the big brain and we're like the little brains, you know? <laughs> I, I've often felt that that kind of was demeaning to me, but on the other hand, when I see how it actually plays out, I say, okay, yeah, my brain can't put that one yeah. together. I'm sorry. I just don't know it's how to do that crazy. one. <laughs> and you know what's so cool is that we don't have to. That's true. That's what's so cool. Yeah. We don't need to figure out the how. We just let the universe figure it all out. And it does. It's bizarre. Which is actually both good news and bad news. The good news is we don't have to figure out how. The bad news is we don't have to figure out how, despite the fact that we keep trying to. <laughs> so, exactly. You know, we, we, exactly. we, we fall into this trap of, i got to figure out how this is going to work. No, you don't. Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it's so hard not to do that how in that action piece. It's so hard not Absolutely. to jump in and do that one. Uh, so, well, that's what yeah. we're built to do. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to get to the other one about, uh, I, I don't know what contest wings are. I, I think I've seen references to that. It, it probably means some sort of special uh, process or, or something that other people have been advocating as a good thing to do. I don't really know. But without even knowing what contest wings okay, are, I'm, I think we're Googling it. Oh, you're going to look Google Googling. contest wings? Okay. I, well, I am not seeing much, though. Well, I, I can. I think we can probably address it anyway, even though we don't know what it is. We don't really have to know what it is. I mean, she's the only one, or he, I think it's a she, um, is the only one who has to know what that is. And ultimately, what it really comes down to is how does that person feel about it? How does that person re, uh, interact with the feeling of contest wings, right? I mean, it could be jibberty gubbish. It doesn't matter what you're trying to attract. If, if you're trying to attract Jibberty Gush, oh, well, okay, that's what you're trying to attract. <laughs> it's all the same answer. It's the no same answer. It's the same answer. And yet we, we end up talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, even though it's always that same answer. It's fun. Because it's hard to get to that same it's answer. It's fun. It is, yeah. Yeah, often when we're asking these questions, what we're really asking is just what you said. How can I get there when I don't feel it right now? I'm not feeling the contest wings. I'm just not feeling it. How do I get there? And that's where we end up having podcasts. <laughs> well, that, and also, of course, that's where I always go to the book, Ask, and it is given and look mm. amazing. Right. I and mean, I just love those processes in the back. Or even, even just trying little tricks and tips and strategies mm -hmm. 
you know, to raise our vibration in whatever way that is. So, so contest wings, let's say you don't believe you deserve them or you somehow feel that it's, um, it's never going to happen for you. So looking at any positive aspect of anything that's happening right now is one way to raise our vibration mm -hmm. and really milking whatever those are and having appreciation whenever we can. What you're looking at there. I'm, I'm just following the comment stream here. So I'm letting you answer some of these questions while I pick up the comment stream so I know exactly where we're going next. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we're getting some interesting uh, uh, input here. I, I'll try to just pick out some of the good ones. This, this is an interesting one. Person asks, um, how can I use my vision board to boost my manifestations? Yeah, yeah. I get that. So... I mean, I can tell you my interpretation anyway. Okay. Um, what what I would think of that is kind of like how do you supercharge them? Mm. So uh, how do you use your vision board to supercharge your manifestations? So, and it, and it's not even so much the manifestations. The manifestations is the result that you want. Mm -hmm. But um, so the way that I've used vision boards is just to pick out things that I like, that make me feel good, that make me feel happy. Mm -hmm. You can cut out pictures. You can write words. You can cut out words. You can draw things, um, use photographs, whatever it is that sort of exemplifies for you the things that you want that make you feel good. And when they're up on this board and you've got them in a place that's visible and you're feeling in a good place, really focusing on those specific things. It might be picking one out that really resonates with you that day right. and diving into that picture and picturing yourself. Let's say it's, you know, a place in the Bahamas on the beach. And so picturing yourself actually sitting there and the, your feet in the sand and how it's warm and the sun shining on you and the sound of the waves and the wind blowing on you and just really putting yourself into that place where you're just feeling so peaceful and so calm. Or whatever that feeling is that it is you want to manifest. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be that you want to be excited about uh, something new coming into your life. And so you have a picture of a roller coaster and your picture going down that roller coaster and how you're just like, <laughs> ah, screaming the whole way down and it gets you all excited and happy. Um, so uh, I feel like one way to use that is by looking at that whenever you're feeling good mm. and using any of those pictures to take that manifestation and really boost it and milk it and supercharge it. So yeah. that it makes it more likely that it can come into your experience. That's Does that good. make sense? Yeah, I think that's a good explanation. Uh, what do and, you think? You got you got any extra I, ideas? Well, I've never really been one to use vision boards. To be perfectly honest, it's not been my favorite you know modality to use. In part because eyesight is is far from my strongest sense. Of so the five senses, is actually my weakest one. So it's not What's my go-to. Hearing. Not surprising for a ah. podcaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what might you do in a hearing to use that hearing part? Oh, for me, it's listening to positive music. And I have at times um, dictated to a, a, you know, a machine, to a, a phone or something like that. I've talked about on a phone what I want out of life. And to that extent, I am, I, I'm using it kind of in the same way that a vision board gets used. But for me, mostly it's about just listening to what I like. And that's why I pick positive music because the positive music has either positive lyrics or just a happy beat or a combination of the two. And I've, if I listen to that enough, that's, that's usually enough no matter what I'm doing to just kind of give me a, a, at least a three or four step lift, you know, pick me up quite a, a bit. A little boost. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That and also I love, I do, I agree with you. I really love listening to positive music or, or more just like music that just is like happy music. Kind of yeah. like that beginning music you have in the beginning. Yeah. Well, that's I why I picked have to that dance one. To it. There's just something about it. It just feels um, good. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I also was thinking about how with listening to, just listening to Abraham, mm. listening to Esther's voice. Now it's like, it's, I'm conditioned. You know? <laughs> I hear her voice and I'm like, ah. Oh, I just get, unless she's in, like, it's really funny. I, I got to throw this in there because I've, I've always noticed how um, sometimes Esther, or I should say Abraham, can be very soothing mm -hmm. and supportive. And um, other times, as, Abraham can be, like, almost harsh. Did you ever uh, notice that? Well, it doesn't surprise me, to be honest. And the reason it doesn't surprise me is Abraham is not a single being. Right. Abraham is a collection of beings, and and I always think of it so in terms of who has. So do they speak individually? Well, I think so. I, I think of it in terms of who has the microphone. Like if you go to a workshop, 
Abraham through Esther picks who's going to have the microphone next, and that's the person who sits in the hot seat. I think they do the same thing on the other side. So I wonder if it has something to do with who's resonating, which which being, non-physical being, is resonating with the person who's coming. I think so. I think that's what it is. Or or, or at least who has the most useful message for that person. Because I've also heard that the person who gets selected to be in the hot seat is the one that Abraham collectively believes they can help um, accelerate their vibration the quickest. So they can show Ah. people quickly how to get there. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if they're also picking the representative on their side who is closest to what that person is trying to get to or where they are currently or some com- combination of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that I was actually thinking about this this morning because what it also brought up for me was the idea of Jerry, you know, being a non-physical and any, any of our loved ones who have mm-hmm. passed away and who are in that non-physical place, are they, do they maintain their personality? Oh, are definitely. They, I mean, we know that Esther channels, or not channels, she doesn't call it channeling. She calls it receiving. Esther receives Jerry. When I was at the workshop in April, she was, she, she was, uh, you know, she was voicing Abraham and then she kind of stopped mid sentence and said, Oh, that was Jerry. That was Jerry. (laughs) I know. I've seen that. I've seen that. And like, how do you tell? It's just so interesting. So it makes me think like when you're, you are the dead person, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you experience your life on a day to day basis? Is there a time? Is there like a day? Is it just, and how, you know, the other piece is non physical beings. Um, you know, the universe is, is paying attention to each one of us all the time. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? And keep it all straight. Oh. Um, got big brains. Big brains. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best answer I can give you is that I understand that they are completely 100% connected to source energy at all times, whereas we, in the contrast, are able to disconnect, although we really don't ever disconnect, which means they're constantly in that good feeling place, which means they're constantly able to just instantly manifest whatever they want. And when you're in that kind of a, a zone, so to speak, I imagine it's fairly easy to find ways to you know, taking huge amounts of data and process it, particularly when you have virtually unlimited numbers of non-physical beings to help do the processing. You know, it it seems very, very doable to me. But um, in terms of the mechanics of it, I couldn't possibly tell you the mechanics of it. I have no idea. (laughs) I know. It makes me so curious. Yeah. I wish I could hear from somebody who would give me the answer. I've longed for, for a long time. I've wished that I could communicate the way Esther does. And she tells us that we can. And I keep trying and I haven't gotten there yet. Um, you know, but, I feel like I'm good at the speaking to them part, but it's the not knowing when I'm receiving part. Oh my gosh. I just thought of this crazy story. I got to tell you though. Okay. This has to do with that same topic. Okay. I have, I had this foot issue for a long, long time mm-hmm. and I actually was wearing a boot. I don't know if I told you this before. I was wearing a boot for six months on my foot. I don't remember this one. And I had tendonitis and all these issues. It was just a big pain in the ankle. <laughs> and I was living, you know, <laughs> and so even after the six months, I went into the podiatrist and I'm like, it still hurts. And he's like, oh, forget it. There's nothing else. We're thinking, oh, this is not going to work. You know, it's not OK that I'm like going to be limping around the rest of my life. So I went, I work at a hospital. And so I went to the hospital and met up with one of the orthopedic surgeons, just ran into him in the cafeteria and said, OK, here's my scenario. What would you do in this case? And he said, well, I'd go to this one guy. He's the foot and ankle guy, and that's the one you should go to. He's worth I'm thinking, oh, I don't want surgery. I don't want to go to an orthopedic surgeon. You know, so I'd been kind of avoiding that whole thing. But I thought, well, look, I'm, he, this podiatrist can't offer me anything else, so I've got to figure something else out. So he gave me the name. I, he didn't know where I live. This is my, the hospital is far away from where I live and stuff. So turns out it was an orthopedic surgeon who is in my neighborhood, like a mile from my house, and on my insurance plan. So that was good to start with. I went in to see him. He said, well, we can do these few things. And he gave me some options. One included like a cortisone shot, stem cell injections, different types of things. So he gave me this one shot, the, what, the most painful shot I've had in my life. It was one of those where you're sweating and you're cursing and it's just bad. It's like having a baby in my foot. And so, <laughs> so I left and he said, come back in a week and we'll do these stem cell injections in the side of your ankles and the most painful part. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay, okay. Come back in a week on the way to the doctor's office. I am terrified. Mm. I'm, I'm just like sweating. My heart's yeah. pounding. I'm like, oh my God, I'm completely freaking out. So my mom passed away back in 2004, but I still, I always talk to her all the time. 
And so I'm like, okay, mom, I really need your help here. I need you to come with me and I need you to make this, these shots not hurt. And then I need you to heal this right away. This is, this has got to be gone. I'm sick of this. It's got to go. And so I walked into the doctor's office and I sat down and he turns to me and says, out of the blue, are you related to Mary Framo? (laughs) And that's my mom's name. And I'm like, what? (laughs) <laughs> it was just crazy. I mean, just out of the blue. And I said, well, yeah, that was my mom, but she died. He's like, yeah, I know. He said, my dad was really good friends with her. Uh-huh. And his dad was a therapist. My mom was a therapist. Uh-huh. And they were really, really close friends. So it just happened that the wow. one guy that I get sent to is the son of this really good friend of my mom's. Right. So he gave me the shots. They didn't hurt hardly at all. I walk out of there. He's like, okay, it's going to take a couple weeks, and it'll get a little worse over time, blah, blah, blah. So I go, I'm going on a trip that weekend to Las Vegas. I take the boot off. I put it in my bag and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try walking without it in the airport and see how it goes. I never put the boot back on again. Ah. It was like instant. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Well, so it makes somehow, a lot of sense to I mean, me. It, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Louis DeFrame, or Louis DeFrame, I did it again. Louis D'Souza and I, I, I did that last week too. <laughs> well, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Somehow you link us together. I guess. I don't, well, because you're both Monday. That's what it is, I guess. But Louis de Sousa uh, and I have, uh, we're having a conversation this morning. Um, well, not really, but. <laughs> oh, he's not? Where? No. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> no, he's actually from South Africa and lives in the UK. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Really interesting guy, too. I mean, this guy's got great knowledge. He's been a, a real asset to the podcast. Uh, but he and I were talking about, uh, how illness of all kind works. I mean, it all originates in our thought process, just the way Abraham talks about. And also the healing originates in our thought process. And I can just tell from the way you told that story, you were monomaniacally focused on this is going to heal. You didn't care how. You didn't know how it was going to happen. And you kind of put out a supplication to your mom, please help make this happen. It was your way of saying, I release it. I don't know what to do, but I need this thing fixed. And, and by God, it was going to be fixed. And it was. So it actually doesn't surprise me at all. There's something about moms. I don't know. There's something about moms. They just, they like always pull through in the end, you know? This is true. <laughs> now, the other thing that you mentioned and, and that I was mentioning too, um, I've brought up with other co-hosts and it's been pointed out to me, even though I have said numerous times, I don't, I want to be able to do it like Esther does. I want to be able to communicate and all that kind of stuff. And, but I, I don't know how to hear what they're saying. And it, it, Cindy Chavez has pointed out to me, Wendy Dillard, while she was doing the show, pointed out to me numerous times. I think Tom Wells has pointed out to me. I think Joel's even pointed out to me. The fact is, oh, Linda, Linda Armstrong has definitely pointed it out to me. We all have that communication. We just don't recognize it. It's in the form of feelings. Because remember what the rule is. When we're feeling good, we are in alignment with our inner being. When we're not feeling good, we're out of alignment with our inner being. So it is a, so, so it's a direct correlation going on there. So all we have to do is pose the question, then ask ourselves, how does the, how does it feel? If it comes back feeling bad, we know the answer is no. If it comes back feeling good, we know the answer is yes. So we actually do have that communication. We may not have developed it as far as Esther Hicks has, who has this tremendous ability to just relax into it and just let all, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and to re- receive them so clearly. But nevertheless, we all do receive communication, and we we do it effectively. Oh. And you're right, because I'm thinking about, you know, when you're in that good place, when you've meditated or you walk meditated like you do or whatever it is that gets you into that high vibration, and then you have these thoughts that just kind of pop into your head, that is our inner being communicating it with is. us. It is, yeah. And that's when I think it's so important to listen to those thoughts when we're in that good place or when we've actually – gotten ourselves into that um, place where we're releasing and we're not having active thoughts, where we're just kind of releasing and being in that chill place. That's when those thoughts and feelings that pop into our head are the ones we've really got to write down and listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially or if or we just listen to and remember. Especially if we weren't actually trying to think of a solution or think of something. It just kind of came to us out of nowhere. Those are the ones to pay attention to because they're, yeah. they're almost invariably the ones that are coming from deep inside, which is cool exactly. stuff. Exactly. Exactly. We've, we've got uh, more questions that have come in, so let's let's try to get to a couple of them here. Sure. Pedro asks how to let the desire go, how to trust something that you still cannot see. That's a great question. Well, you can test it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of times people who use their minds a lot 
they kind of need that proof. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how sometimes you can just put out there something that you want or you start thinking about something that you have no resistance to and it just starts appearing right and left in your life. It gives you kind of that validation. I, I don't know what works for you. I think it's also helpful to realize that there are a number of situations that we kind of take for granted where we do this already. For instance, mm -hmm. we all breathe. What are you breathing? You're breathing air. What air? Can you point out the air to me? <laughs> where is the air right. here? Can you see it? I can't see sure. it. You know, but it's there. Do you have faith yeah. that the air is there? Well, yeah, you're breathing. You can feel the air. You can feel, actually, you can't feel the air so much. Sometimes you can, but more often you just feel your lungs expanding or contracting, you know. Mm -hmm. So does that prove the air is there? Well, yeah, kind of indirectly it does. But you still have to believe it even though you can't see it. You know, so there's an example of something that we can't see, but we believe. Another example would be electricity. What does electricity yeah. look like? You know, electricity looks like, well, electricity. No. <laughs> it looks like nothing. It's like, what does red look like? Unless oh, you it see looks it like red. You know? you <laughs> yeah. You, know, you can see Absolutely. a spark sometimes. You're right. You can sometimes see like an arc. So jumping what across. was the first part of his question? Again? Well, the, the first part of the question, let me read it exactly. He says, how do you let the desire go? How do you trust something that you still cannot see? And so what, that, what do, the see cannot see is the second part, but that first part, right. the how do you let the desire go? Mm-hmm. And when, you, when, I, when I think about letting a desire go, what I really am thinking about is letting go of the reason why I think the desire isn't going to come true. Because that's what we're really yes. letting go of. Yeah. The, re the reason yeah. we advocate often to people to let go of their desire is because when many times when we hold on to the desire, especially if it's something that is really important to us, it's really important, really important because we don't have it. We lack it. And so the more that we focus on it, we're focusing from a position of lack. So that's why it's so important to let go of it. Um, for me, my classic example from my experience was how I met Louise, because I had been extraordinarily unsuccessful with women. I had like the, the one of the longest losing streaks in male history when it came to women. <laughs> 20, oh. 20, 20 straight years. No, I'm not kidding. 20 straight years. So glad of, it's of behind you now. One <laughs> disastrous non relationship after another. It was just horrible. <laughs> and then I finally just threw in the towel. I, I gave up. And a month later, I met Louise and we got married a, a year and a quarter after that. You know, so. And maybe the universe set it all up for all those bad relationships to happen so you would finally let go. Partly that. And partly the, the I think the, the universe was trying to deliver it to me all that time, but I wasn't letting it in. And I know that for a fact yeah. because as I look back, I realize now what I didn't realize then, which is I was convinced every time I met a new woman that it was not going to work out oh, because I had this long right. series of experiences where it didn't work out. So, of course, the yeah. universe had to say, okay, this one won't work out either. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's so, what we're letting go ways. of. Yeah, yeah, totally. I agree. It's you're letting go of doubt. You're letting go yeah. of of the negative thoughts of the of the beliefs that you have that don't match your desire. Um, and I think also one of the ways we can do that because it's hard not to keep a th not to think a thought that you keep thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, she says that over and over and over again. Right. And one of the tricks is to think about anything else that feels better. Just for yes. think of the next better feeling thought, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter. And what that does allow you to do is let go of that other. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And when we let go, it's crazy how things just kind of happen. Mm -hmm. The more we let go, the faster it seems to manifest. Oh, it's it's amazing how fast it happens. Funny thing was, even when I let go, I still hadn't completely let go, but I let go enough for it to come. So even when it arrived, I still was convinced it wasn't here. <laughs> it took me a while to finally realize, oh, wait a minute, it's actually here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, that's cute. Well, I'm glad you guys finally did meet up. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, another good question from, from Katrina. I had just moved to Canada from America at the time. Not sure what that is. Been here over seven years, so I bet the board would be different now. So I think she's referring to a vision board. Vision board. And mm -hmm. that's an interesting question. She doesn't actually ask it as a question, but the question is, does it make sense to update your vision board over time based on oh, what absolutely. your experiences are? Oh, Yeah. Especially, but, but again, I would go back to that rule or that law of do it when you're in a high feel, high vibration. 
Yes. Because anytime you're you're about to you want to manifest something or think about something that you want, you want it to be when you're in a good feeling place. Mm -hmm. Because then you have the power of the universe behind you and it makes things happen way quicker. Way quicker mm -hmm. than if you're just pushing and efforting and trying to make it happen on your own or trying to convince yourself. Mm -hmm. That sort of adds that resistance so you're sort of staying in one place. You're staying stuck right. here because part of you is pushing for it and part of you is resisting it. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is true. That's exactly what happens. So, yeah, I definitely say update that board. Update the board. Not <laughs> not creating a new one. Some people say advocate uh, they advocate creating a new board, but you actually think updating the board makes more sense. You know, I think whatever works for anybody. I don't think no, there's any okay. rules about that. I think yeah. whatever is going to work, if you feel if it makes you feel happy to do it one way, do it that way. If it makes you feel happy to do it the other way, do it the other way. Whatever is easy and fun. Okay. Now, Kay has asked a question. This is a question you see a lot, both in this group and the other law of attraction groups. This this kind of thing pops up all over the time, all over the place. And Kay didn't actually ask it as a question, but the question is usually, "What does this mean?" And what Kay wrote is, I keep seeing 888. So in, invariably, we'll see a post about, I, I keep seeing 888, 444, 222, 1234, you know, some uh, really cool number combination. And they, th some people are concerned that it's, it, it might be something bad. Others are hoping it might be something good. What does it mean? How do I react to it? How do I respond to it? What's your take on it? When, when somebody's seeing well, a, well, a number I, combination. I actually listened to an Abe tape that actually had that question oh, okay. uh, posed. And um, what my understanding of the answer was is that there's two things to that. One is that uh, when you have numbers that are lining up like that, it's the universe just showing you that, they're, that it's the most alignment that you can find in, find in those numbers. So you get one, 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 one. It's the most alignment that a clock can show you. Okay. So it's just showing that you're in alignment when you've got those numbers coming up. Okay. The other piece as to what the specific numbers mean has to do with what what you what meaning you assign to those numbers. Mm. Yeah. So if that's something like for me, it's just like seeing the one 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 just makes me so happy. There's just something. It's like oh, <laughs> I feel like I'm connecting with Jerry whenever I <laughs> whenever I see this because he was really into the number thing. Seriously, I feel like Jerry is like going, going hi. Whenever I got the one 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 one, mm -hmm. that, that reminds me too. What number it is. That reminds me too of a story that you once told me. I don't think you've told on the podcast. You might have, but uh, somebody actually posted. I don't remember which group. It may have been this group. A question about have you ever manifested um, meeting a famous person? And as soon as I saw that story, that question, I thought of the story you told me about Jerry and Esther. Is that a story you'd like to yeah. tell? Sure, sure. Oh my gosh, I love that story. It's so cool. Um, I was uh, so they one of their houses. Uh, well, Jerry's not with us anymore, but one of Esther's houses uh, is here in the San Diego area in Del Mar. And I had way back, this was like, gosh, years ago. And I had just, um, I was into law of attraction. I was doing coaching. I was using it in my coaching groups and in my individual coaching. So I was into it, but I had, they didn't have the YouTube thing. They didn't really have, I had never even gone on the website. It was earlier on before a lot of the techie stuff existed and they still just had CDs and things like that. So I was, I was, whenever I went to one of their, I went, uh, well, I just had some from, some from, from some friends, I'd had that um, stack of Law of Attraction CDs, and I just kept listening mm -hmm. to them over and over and over and over. Yeah. And so I was really excited about the coaching that I was doing, and I really just wanted to meet them. I didn't know anything about their workshops or anything. <laughs> I just thought, gosh, I want to meet them so bad. And I had heard that they had gone to this one restaurant in the Del Mar area, and I was like, I am going to go to this restaurant, and I'm going to walk in there, and they're going to be there. And then I'm going to just talk to them. I'm going to go up and talk to them. <laughs> and so I walked into the restaurant, and they were sitting at the table. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, my God. It was just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I went up to the table. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I was so excited. And they were, like, the sweetest you could ever. I mean, they were just, like, so sweet. And what was really crazy about that on top of it, I mean, the universe had lined this up in so many amazing ways. Not just meeting them, but Jerry said, well, you know, uh, we just came out with that new book, The Vortex, and I knew there was a reason that I had it in my car, and I'll go get you a copy. And I was like, oh, okay, that'd be great. And so, uh, and then I talked to them a little bit more, and I was telling them about the coaching I'm doing, and they're like, hey, great. And they, they were just so sweet. And Esther said, well, you know, we do these workshops every, you know, all over the country, and I had no idea. And I was like, wow. And she said, and our, the next one is this Saturday in San Diego. 
And so she gave me free tickets to it, and I was so excited. And I was like, I don't want to bug you guys. I mean, I could have just stayed there all night. <laughs> but I, I went over to the bar, met my girlfriend, and my girlfriend came in. I met her. And um, I told her about it. I was over the moon, and she was like, wow, that's really cool. But she wasn't really quite as excited as I was. Mm. And then after about a half hour, Jerry came over to us and said, here, I brought the book for you. And he signed it for me, the end of the Vortex book, and gave it to me, which is so soon. He's like, he said to my friend, I'm sorry I didn't bring one for you. You know, and she's like, oh, that's okay. And he said, just go ahead and go to the uh, workshop with her this Saturday. And she was like, great. And then about a half hour after that, he came back, he went home and got her book and brought it back for her. Oh, wow. I mean, what a sweetheart. Yeah. What a sweetheart. That was really, really cool. I, mean, so talk I, about, just, I just lucked out with that. Talk about manifesting. I mean, that's exactly what the question was about. Manifesting, attracting, being, you know, meeting an actual famous person. And you did it. And, you know, there are a lot of people who say, well, oh, that's, that might be asking a little bit too much. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Well, you you know, can actually it's do funny, it. I, for some reason, I had no resistance to it. Yeah. I just, I, I don't think I realized how big they were at that point. I don't mm. think I realized about the, how like pervasive they were into these workshops and cruises and all this. I didn't know any of that stuff. It probably so helped I you. Didn't have, it did. Yeah. It totally did because it didn't, I wasn't threatened by it. I just thought, mm -hmm. wow, they're so cool and I'd love to do this. And mm -hmm. It just happened. Yep. So yeah, it was a really cool thing. So, Cause that, that's, that yeah. is the mindset of, of having somebody like that as a friend, for instance, it, it, it's like having any other friend. They're, they're, it's just a friend. And of course they're a friend. You know, that's who they are. They're my friend. Yep. You know, that's the mindset in a sense you had to be in. Not so much being their friend, but being, you know, associated with them in, just in a accepting. certain way. So yeah. they, so that they could be there. And that, that of course they I were. wasn't intimidated by the idea. Yeah. I was just excited about it. And I yeah. was really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought it in. Really, really, I love that memory. That's a good one. <laughs> Now I've got memory. the book to, to keep and look at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's um in, in LA circles that book is worth something for sure. <laughs> probably, probably. I'm not getting rid of it. Let's see. What else we you have got? Questions. Um, a lot of comments. Let's see. What kind of comments are we getting? I can't uh, see it, so Jeff, I'm curious. Jeffrey's saying that he loves Linda Armstrong. I love Linda too, so I agree with cool. you on that one. Yeah. Uh, he also says, "Trust your instincts. Trust your intuition." I think we can both agree with that one. That's exactly what you were doing there. Absolutely. You were just trusting what you know what you wanted, and boom, just go with it. You know, I mean, exactly. there, there, were, there were a lot of possibilities for that day. Very few of them actually had them being at the restaurant. You know, I know it was much more likely for them to not be at the restaurant. You go to the restaurant, and they're not there. That would be that would be normal. <laughs> I know, but I know. you just trusted. I, okay, totally, I'm going to go. You didn't even think about it. Yeah. You didn't give it any thought. You just said, "I'm just going to go." <laughs> <laughs> and I totally agree with that trust your instinct. There's something that, I mean, it's like, I feel like this is a lesson I've learned over and over, over again in my life, mm -hmm. where, you know, you've got that little tiny gut feeling that sort of like something happens and you're like, ooh, and you don't really listen to it and you rationalize why there, really you should just go ahead and do this thing anyway. And mm -hmm. then you go ahead and do it and you're like, why didn't I listen to right. that little tiny gut feeling? Or the other way. Where you sound something, you you know, feel that little thing about something being good, and you're excited about it, but then you're like, no, you know, I don't want to be selfish, or I don't want to be whatever, and then you don't do it, and every single time, it turns out that little tiny voice was absolutely right. Don't you find that to be true? I'm finding it more and more. I'm I'm still learning to trust my ability to connect to that and to recognize it for what it is. Mm -hmm. What I have found is that I was able, much earlier in my life to notice the voice of warning. Ah, uh, yeah. The one that says, no, don't go that way. Go the other right. way. Right. You know, um, the one that comes to my or mind. Or like quickly. you're walking down the street and someone's behind you and you feel this thing. You yeah. don't even know they're there, but you feel it. But, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Louise and I, uh, on our, we had two honeymoons actually. For our second honeymoon, we went to Barbados. And nice. when we were in, we were, we took like a, uh, one of these little jitney buses downtown, which we'll never do again, but it was an experience. <laughs> oh my goodness. Those people drive like maniacs. But uh, we got downtown, <laughs> down to the, the port area and we're walking, uh, along the main street that heads down, right down to the shoreline. And there's a park over on the side. And we said, oh, let's check out the park. And we took about five steps toward the park and I just stopped. And Louise turns to me and she says, what is it? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, does it feel good? I said, no, it doesn't feel good. And she says, what is it? Is it the park? I said, yeah, there's something not right. I don't know what it is. Wow. Something's not right. 
So she didn't hesitate. She says, okay, so let's go this way. So we went over to the street. She said, let's start working our way across. Maybe we can find somebody who can you know, tell us about where we can get a tour of the island or whatever. And we got to the street, and a cab comes up, and, and the cab driver is looking at us. And so we just kind of waved him over. He came over. We got to talking to him. He was this really nice guy named Steve who was originally from Canada and who had spent most of his days um, cabbing around the island. And we asked him, do you know, uh, you know, is it, uh, are there any like tour services that can give us tours of the island? He says, well, I can do that for you. So we ended up meeting Steve because we were directed over to meet Steve. So Steve could be our tour guide. And he gave us this wonderful tour the next day. Yeah. So to That's this day, cool. we don't know. Does that mean that we were being warned away from the park or does it mean we were right. being directed to Steve or was it both? I don't or know both. what the answer is. Yeah. yeah. The point is, I listened to it. I listened to it. It didn't feel good at first. And I just listened to the thing that, you know, don't go with the way the thing that doesn't feel good. And I didn't. And it worked out really nicely. And it's so funny. That emotional guidance system is there. And it it's is. so strong. It doesn't sound loud, but it's like powerful. And yeah. listening to it is so important. And yet half the time we get up in our brains and we're like, oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Or the funny thing yeah. is, I, I, and, I mentioned earlier, my best sense is auditory. But when I get these signals... I don't hear them. It's not an actual right. hearing. You it's just sort of, them. it's just you like, you know, it, it's kind of like, it, it, it's like there's just energy in your face kind of a feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's um, like a sensing. It's yeah. Like somehow it's, you sense it, but you can't even uh, ascribe it to a, a specific sense. Oh, I actually experienced it necessarily... as, as if there was something pushing against me. It's like, like oh, I'm being ah. hit in the chest or, you know, pushed into the head or something like that. I can, I can just feel it. It doesn't hurt or it's anything It's like an like energy that. force. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar to what I experienced. Uh, uh, there was one of the early shows that I did with Linda Armstrong. Before the show, she gave me one of her regular coaching sessions, energy coaching. And she, she does what she calls helping clear you of your own resistances. And when she starts the session, she asks you for permission. Can I can I uh, come into you energetically? I said sure. And so she started, and all of a sudden, I I felt this energy coming into me. Wow. I'm thinking, oh my god! I thought this was going to be more metaphorical. I didn't realize it was going to be something I actually felt. But it was wow. the same kind of thing. It was just like, Amazing. whoa! Oh my goodness! It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was not anything you could miss either. It was really strong. So yeah, that's yeah. the way it usually. Whenever I get a signal, it's, it's kind of like I I almost got tapped on the forehead. Like wait a minute, stop! There's something important here. Can you notice so what it is? <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. And the more we listen to it, the better it turns out. Oh, yeah. So let's see. What else we got? Uh, Jeffrey's giving us a lot of comments here. Most recently he said, work from a place of love, but listen to fear. The ultimate contrast in parentheses. Work from a place of love, but listen to fear. Does that resonate with you? Listen to fear. I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure either. Yeah. I can't say that it really resonates with me. If it works with, for him, that's really the most important thing. Because what yeah. I was describing yeah. is what works for me. Clearly, it works for me because it, it has a big impact on me. But really, I think it comes down to whatever works for you. It's kind of like what you said about the numbers, which I agreed with, by the way. Um, it, it really comes down to what do the numbers mean to you? I mean, Linda will point out to you there are places where you can actually look up online what different number combinations are. There, there are websites. I think they're called... Um, angel numbers or something like that. And you, the, the website has been set up to, you just, you know, identify your number and it'll, it'll show you what that particular number adds up to and, and what it means from an angelic perspective. Um, but for me, and, and I think it's perfectly legitimate. That's fine. Um, for me, mm -hmm. what it really comes down to is what does it mean for you? Like, um, right. a story that I have told previously, I was, Actually, I was answering questions about numbers, <laughs> about that, literally, <laughs> on on, the, on the, the Facebook group. And uh, long story short, I'd been answering, giving kind of the same kind of answer over and over again. And there were a lot of people that particular day who were asking the same kinds of questions. And so, I found, so I finally got to the point where I said, I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm done. I've done it. enough for the day. I'm going to go do something else. Um, this was shortly after Cindy Chavez had come onto the podcast. And she sent me a copy of Pam Grout's book, E Squared which is a series of experiments to do with the law of attraction to kind of prove to yourself, yes, this stuff really works. And, uh, you know, I was really appreciative that she sent it. And so I said, oh, let's get that out and I'll, I'll give that a shot. Well, for, I read the introduction and the preface and so forth, and then I got to the first experiment. And maybe that's something that our other call, or the person who wrote in the question about believing, maybe that's something that book would be beneficial for. That's a good point, yeah. E-squared is a great way to, to, to help prove to yourself that all this stuff really does work. 
Um, it sure worked for me that day. And the way it worked was kind of funny because I did the first exercise. The first exercise was basically where you were going to ask the universe to send you something, but you're going to let the universe decide what it's going to be. Some mm -hmm. sort of proof that the law of attraction really works. And there's going to be a bonus gift that goes along with it. And again, the universe decides what that is. And she's given a whole bunch of examples of what people had actually manifested doing that. Well, I said, okay, I'll give that a shot. And she wants you to actually do it like an, a lab experiment. So she has a lab sheet, you know, and you fill out the lab sheet. Well, I didn't actually fill it out, but I kind of mentally filled it out. And it says, okay, what's the date? Well, the date was December 27th, uh, 2017. I remember the date. And, uh, and it says, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask the universe to manifest something. The universe is going to pick what it is. It's going to be really obvious to me that it, it's proof that law of attraction works and there's going to be a bonus gift. I said, okay. And then it says, okay, now, Write down what the time is that you're starting this experiment. So I picked up my phone. I looked at the phone, and it said 555, which, of course, was a number combination, which made me burst out laughing because I realized <laughs> that the answer had just been delivered to me in my hand before I'd even begun the whole experiment. And when I was laughing, I realized that the gift had been given to me as well because I was getting being given the gift of laughter. So within one tenth of one second, the entire experiment was done. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I love that. I love that. It's it's so cool when you see that proof and that mm. manifestation. It really, yeah. It's just exciting. It, it is. makes you so happy. Yeah. There's something about it that resonates in your bones. It's like, oh, this is so validating. Well, Louise wanted to know what it was because I was actually laughing so hard I fell on the floor. She said, what is it? What are you laughing at? <laughs> Oh, it was fun. Cute. It was fun. Hey, we only have a few <laughs> minutes left. I want, to, I want to make sure we get the announcements in, and then I'll see if there's a, one last thing for us to address. First of all, if you're not a subscriber, okay. please become a subscriber. The instructions on how to do that are in most of the places where there's a description associated with this podcast. You can uh, go in there and click that link. If you can't find a link, just go to the homepage of the website, loatoday.net. You'll find links for Android users and links for iPhone and iPad users, just you know, whatever device you're using. Click that. It'll walk you right through the process, and then you'll become a subscriber, and all the podcast episodes will come right to your device. And then once you're a subscriber, keep sharing. Keep sharing out there on social media. That's how people are finding out about it. And chances are that's probably how you found out about it. You found out found out because somebody else shared or pointed out or, or you know, added it to their page or, or include you in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group or whatever. You found it because somebody else helped to bring the message to you. Carry it along. I and mean, this is the one time to, to actually honor a chain letter, right? Help mm -hmm. get the word exactly. out. Help, help more exactly. people find out about your Daily Dose of Happy because that's how more people get their day, Daily Dose of Happy. So subscribe and share. Those are the messages for the day. Uh, so one, one last... I also wanted to oh, go ahead. just mention that if people wanted to join us on these, they can join oh, yeah. our uh, Facebook group yep. called... Law of Attraction. The Facebook group. Law of Attraction Changed My Life group. Law of Attraction Changed My Life Facebook group. And right. they can join that and yep. then participate in this. Absolutely. Or they can download the Blue Gene app and do That's it right. that way as well. Yeah. And, and we're, including that. Well. we're including that in a lot of places and too. Last little plug, is anybody interested in talking to me further or coaching with yeah. me? Yeah. How does somebody reach out to Patty? Yeah. <laughs> Patty at pattyframocoaching.com. Absolutely. Send me an email. Oh, that sounds good. All right. We're going to get one last comment in. we got 10 seconds to ask this one. How do you remain positive when things are continually going wrong? I don't know if we can do that in 10 seconds, but we'll try. Oof. That's going to be tough. How do you remain positive when things are going wrong? Get off the subject. Yeah. Whatever it is that's bugging you. Think of any, any reach for any better feeling thought and focus on that. And anytime your mind starts going back to that negative thing that's bugging you, pivot away from it onto something that feels better and focus on that as much as you can. And meditate, go out in nature, take a nap, whatever it is that raises your vibration. Absolutely. That's yeah, my agree. two cents in time. I think you got it. You just nailed it. I mean, we could <laughs> go on for that you know, for a longer period of time if we have the time to do it, but we don't. That's okay. Hey, this has been great. I love to... This has been great. I'd love to encourage people to join us next week. Next yeah, week. let's do this again next week. We'll do this for a few weeks and see uh, what kind of uh, involvement we can get from people because so far it's been good. Meantime, I look forward to talking with you then. Hope you have a great week. You too. All Take right. Care. And we'll see you all next time as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Ha, ha, ha.